Welcome to Highway Herald, your roadmap to the latest in auto. A year ago, the EV market was accelerating at 90%, with plans for two-thirds of new vehicles to be electric by 2032. But now, the landscape has shifted. Growth has decelerated to 15%, emission rules have eased, prices are dropping, investments are on hold, and dealers are hesitant to sell EVs. Is this the start of a downfall? It's possible, as the EV market is in a tougher state than expected. Here are seven reasons why. Reason number seven, the electric pickup market is stalling. The EV industry is struggling, particularly the pickup segment. While the market grows slowly, electric pickups have hit a standstill. Rivian, an early mass producer of electric pickups, saw a 14% sales drop in 2023, selling only 11,306 pickups. In January, sales fell 43% year over year, predicting a bleak outlook for Rivian's R1T model. Legacy car makers aren't faring better, Ford has downsized F-150 Lightning production and reassigned 1,400 workers. GM sold a mere 213 all-electric Silverados in January, with mass production delayed until late 2025. The issue? Electric pickups can't compete with their ICE counterparts. Automakers focused on luxury over practicality, a strategy that doesn't work with pickups. Truck buyers value towing and payload capacity, convenience, utility, and value for money. Electric pickups, overpriced and underperforming, especially in towing and max range, are unsurprisingly seeing slow sales. Reason number six, the rapid electrification plan backfired. Around a year ago, the EPA proposed new rules with stricter emission standards. The goal was to accelerate the adoption of EVs and make them the primary mode of transportation in record time. The government aimed to make two thirds of new cars all electric by 2032, but after seeing last year's sales results and this January's figures, it's clear that this goal is out of reach. Instead, the EPA has rolled out a new set of less stringent rules. Under the new plan, the aim is to electrify just one-third of the market by 2032, and some sources suggest this includes plug-in hybrids as well. The emission standards have been relaxed, and the new target is to cut carbon emissions by 49% instead of the initially planned 56%. This 7% difference might not seem like much, but it's just enough to help automakers dodge green tax credits and let the market grow organically. Plus, this means that the big three can continue their pickup lineups without drastic changes, and heavy-duty trucks will keep guzzling gasoline and diesel for many more years to come. Reason number five, the discount deluge. The EV market's downturn became evident last year when Tesla drastically cut prices to clear its 2023 inventory, prompting other automakers to follow suit despite their existing losses. Ford, for instance, offered substantial discounts on its all-electric F-150 Lightning, leading to a loss of over $5 billion in 2023. When new federal tax credit rules revealed most EVs wouldn't qualify, discounts proliferated. Today, nearly all EVs sell below the MSRP, with average discounts around $10,000 for the Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV and $9,000 for luxury BMW models. Mainstream market players like Volkswagen and Hyundai also offer discounts of $3,000 or more on models like the ID.4 and Ionic 5. This trend of massive discounts, coupled with the financial losses of major automakers, underscores the challenges facing the EV market. Before we delve deeper, we'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to Highway Herald. Your support fuels our passion to create more content like this. Now let's explore reason number four. Tesla stocks take a tumble. As the most valuable automotive company globally, Tesla's performance significantly impacts the entire EV industry. The first quarter of the year has been challenging for the Austin-based company. Massive price cuts have eroded profit margins, and the company is facing stiff competition in China, where BYD has initiated an aggressive price war. Additionally, there's a slowdown in North America and a pressing demand for a more affordable, compact EV. These developments have not been well received by investors, leading to a significant drop in share prices over the past few months. In the first week of March alone, shares fell 7.2% to $188. Taking the whole quarter into account, stocks have plummeted 24% since the year's start. Legacy car makers, particularly American companies that have invested heavily in unsuccessful EV projects, are grappling with similar issues. Last November, in a bid to restore investor confidence, GM announced a plan to buy back its shares worth $10 billion. This move underscores the severity of the challenges facing the EV market. Reason number three, dealers are dodging EVs. 
If you want the pulse of the market, look no further than the dealers. Their actions speak volumes about the state of EVs. It's clear that something's amiss when dealers are less than thrilled about selling EVs. In fact, recent studies show that most dealers would rather not sell them at all. Some have even opted for buyouts over selling EVs, as was the case with Buick, which tried to force dealers to sell EVs and ended up seeing half of them shut down in 2023. The issue here is simple. There's a significant imbalance between supply and demand, leading to a staggering 114 days worth of supplies in the US. That's twice as long as the same period last year and nearly double the supply of gas-powered vehicles. Given this sluggish demand, it's hardly surprising that half of Ford's dealers are reluctant to sell EVs, especially when you consider that they're required to invest around $1 million in EV infrastructure, training programs, and more. Plus, selling EVs requires more time and effort, and the current trend of massive discounts leaves little room for markups. Reason number two, automakers are hemorrhaging money. For some time, companies like Ford and GM have been pouring billions into EVs, but even these hefty investments haven't been enough to establish a sustainable business model. For a variety of reasons, EVs are still a money pit for legacy car makers. Batteries are pricey, and optimizing production is no easy task. All this leads to substantial losses. In fact, aside from Tesla, every car maker is currently in the red with EVs. Some are losing a lot, others even more. Ford is a prime example, having lost around $36,000 on every F-150 Lightning it sold last year. As a result, it ended 2023 with losses exceeding $5 billion. Things have gotten so bad that Ford is now postponing EV investments planned for 2024 to conserve capital. According to some sources, the total of $12 billion investments planned for this year have been delayed. GM is in a similar boat, having pushed back the production of the all-electric Silverado and Sierra to 2025 while the production of the new drive unit won't start until the end of this year. Reason number one, EVs fall short of customer expectations. Perhaps the most telling sign that the EV market is on the brink of a crash came from a recent survey by Boston Consulting Group. The study confirmed what many of you already suspected, the current generation of EVs simply doesn't cut it as the primary mode of transportation. The study showed that about 40% of customers plan to switch to electric cars but their expectations are high. They want a $50,000 EV that can cover at least 350 miles on a single charge and recharge in under 20 minutes. And how many EVs on the market today meet these criteria? Just one. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 SE RWD Long Range is the only electric car that ticks all these boxes, making it clear that the industry has a long road ahead before EVs become attractive to the average consumer. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the world of EVs. Don't forget to subscribe to Highway Herald to stay in the loop with the latest vehicle updates and upcoming videos. See you on the next ride.